Okay, good morning. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to CCA's During COVID. This is our 22nd webinar conducted, and today we are focusing on Columbia, especially where is the center and can it unite? So just before I hand it over, I will make a few introductory remarks and specifically invite you to keep an eye out for another webinar we will host next week on September 2nd on a new post-COVID economic consensus for Latin America. That webinar will have Dr. Jose Antonio Campo, Ramon Casin Daviajar, and some other economists who put together 18 recommendations for a new Latin American economic consensus. So the webinar will examine how and why they believe that the new policy paradigm should replace by the quote unquote Washington consensus still referenced by right and left governments throughout the region. So keep an eye out for that and it will be Eastern time at 11 on September 2nd. Just a, a few logistical things for today's event. This is a two part webinar. The first part will be a one-on-one -on -one conversation between Dr. Berto de la Calle, who I hope you can see on your screens, and Frank, uh, Ken Frankel, the president of CCA. That portion of the webinar will be 45 to 50 minutes. Directly afterwards, we will be inviting our other esteemed panelists who will join Ken for a conversation about the center and whether there is one and if it can unite. That panel will consist of Davi Bohanini, former president of Suda Group, Laura Gil, executive director of La Linea del Medio, Poli Martinez from Semana Magazine, and Gabriel Silva from El Tiempo. This as well will be moderated by Ken. The second part of the webinar will begin no later than five minutes to 11 Eastern time and uh, five minutes to 10 in Colombia. In addition, the conversation will be in Spanish. So please, if you'd like to continue listening in English, there is simultaneous interpretation. So you can switch over to the English channel at the bottom of your screen. And as soon as I hand it over, that will begin. We also ask that if you have any questions, please send them to the Q&A box. So we'll be taking written questions. Please don't raise your hand because with the content and the number of speakers, we'll, we, we will be monitoring the written questions. So thank you for that. So with that, I will hand it over now to your moderator for today's event, Ken Frankel, President of the Canadian Council for the Americas. Over to you, Ken. Thank you so much, Martha. Before I go to Spanish, I'm going to make some comments. I do want to say that this event, as all of our events, are recorded. And for those of you that can't stay with us for all of it, or want to review part of it, or even have friends or others to listen to it, it will be posted on our website no later than tomorrow, and possibly tonight, depending on how quickly we can get our hands on the recording. Okay, so with these initial remarks, Dr. De La Calle, what an honor to be with you today. Thank you for accepting our invitation from your farm, from your country home. So we'd like to address something very important. You've been, you could say, the most important figure talking about the importance of creating a democratic convergence in the political center of Colombia. So I'd like to begin asking you a description of what, what really is democratic convergence and why is it so necessary? Well, good morning, Ken, Martha, and our 
uh, dear translator, and this great panel I'm really pleased to discuss with you all these matters today. Ken, I'd say this, when it comes to the center, you can look at it from two, in two manners. One, the one that you'd like of what should happen in Colombia when it comes to, to what will come by 2020. I'm very worried about that. And also from the empirical perspective, what chances are there? And that's what I've been trying to promote, the idea that I call inverse engineering. Because I think that if we begin to discuss and give names, we cannot create that coalition of center. R right now I'm hearing individuals that give that sensation of fragmentation in the center. Like what happened with the Spanish Republic, it died because from the center to the left, there were way too many struggles. While the right wing had one single leader and one single message, it was clear. So that, that's why I have the need of convergence. Uh, it's evident. I think we, we're gonna be facing a very hard time in Colombia. First of all, because of the pandemic, there's no need to talk about that even more. It's quite visible. There are economists like Nora Lusting that says 30% of those that are middle class in Colombia will drop back to poverty levels. And 16 of the poor will move back to absolute poverty. So I don't think it's, it's necessary to be too pessimistic, but we will face problems. And those problems will worsen if we don't have moderate solutions reflections within the rule of law and instead what we're seeing are populist devi deviation setbacks so in that sense i think it's necessary to create that democratic conversions trying to postpone because many times with postpone it many times uh, for instance i saw a picture of mine under a title called progressive alliance and I don't authorize that. Precisely, it goes against what I believe. Of course, we have to give names. We can't be naive, and we have to talk about mechanics. But I intend to do things the other way. I try to discuss, instead of who's the redenter, let's try to create a basic program um, away from extremes. When we talk about programs in Colombia, everybody laughs. Nobody believes it, it's politicians just trying to make their own contracts. But to give credibility to what I'm saying is the other way around, doing things the other way around. If each political force gives its, has its own boundaries, the opinion will start to see that what they are providing is good, is detailed. Not ultra detailed, we can't do that, but also it's like a natural selection process that takes place because those that are not comfortable within the framework or the boundary set for the center, they can step off, step out, out self-exclude, and that's good. So you could say just for introductory purposes today, um, all that, and also I can imagine we will be discussing the options and the overall feeling of the public opinion on these ideas of the center. Thank you, Doctor. So let's address the talk, the topics that you have based about that convergence. But before we do so, let me ask you this. There's people that say that there is no center in Colombia and that today Colombia is too polarized to really talk about a center per se, how would you respond to that type of comment? You can act either by intuition, through fragmentary evidences, but also there are tools. So if you allow me, Ken, I would like to give two or three figures that make me believe that most of the population of Colombia wants to be in, in the center and it really repudiates the extremes. From the electoral viewpoint, in the last presidential campaigns, at least in the large cities, there was a categorical triumph of the central forces, central with alternative elements, of course. It was like a defeat of the forces of the right, especially in the five or six major cities of Colombia. I believe this shows you strongly that this comes from the vote. 
it's not a speculation. However, if we also move to the world of surveys, which show, for instance, the last one made by Ipamed says that 70% of the Colombians say they're not part of a specific party. A fourth that do have a, be, that are part of a party say that they are the, of the right 10% of the left and the rest are in the, in the territory of the center. There's people that don't want to be an extreme. So I think that through an examination like that, you can have that idea that there is a true notion of a center for this convergence, although I have to state, is that with the new events that are taking place, everything could be altered. I mean, it's very difficult to talk about the future without making mistakes because the situation today is very hot and what is happening with Dr. Amir Uribe and the latest massacres. I mean, these are events. I remember somebody asked the Prime Minister McMillan, McMillan, what's the most difficult part of politics? And he said, events. And that is, and uncertainty is certainly big in Colombia. But moving on to the social aspect, what do I see today? Most of the people surveys, they do not, do not believe that Colombia will turn into a Venezuela. And that's big of everybody thinking. Second, for the first time for a long time, 59 people surveyed accept same-sex marriage. They don't accept same-sex couples to adopt kids, but they do accept their marriage. Especially, uh, thirdly, there is a big resistance against abortion, yes, but we restate Again, something that was lost. 63% of the people in Colombia say that the best solution of what's left of the guerrilla is through talks, not through uh, the military actions. And there's an opinion of not being, of not having any military actions against Venezuela. So I think that socially, through the voting systems and and this, there I can see the growth that there is a center and the fundamental problem has to do with the organization. Again, this is a very difficult time, enormous polarization in Colombia, and it's hard to, to change. Yesterday, I was in a forum with more than a hundred film producers, Colombian, and I was devastated after that because of the pessimism. And if we move again, to the survey of environment, the first questions that have nothing to do with people or specifics, it's like the mood of the country, it, answers are negative, very pessimistic. In fact, in every stratum, in every economic level, before there was more optimism, optimism with the high classes, but today, the percentage of everybody in the bad mood is, is high, very high. So now we need an inspiration, a hope. We, no, no matter what's happening, we cannot continue with that idea that the country's lost, that's unfeasible, because we have to remain with the proposals of the purpose of rescuing the center of Colombia. Thank you, Dr. De La Calle. So in short, what you're saying is that the center has been an orphan seeking a vehicle to express itself, right? Yes, but let me add this. The center has been an orphan, yes. But my concern is that we start to look for the parent, the adopting parent, that's bad. First, we have to organize the family, the house where the kid is gonna live, what we'll do and not do, and then we'll look for the parent. Uh, that's a good use of the metaphor. <laughs> Thank you so much for helping me with that. Okay, let's begin then with the main topics that you have addressed. And as you just said, the events, things have happened, and then you have to adjust everything. 
it's not something set, fixed, but generally you've talked about four things. One, inequality, security, poverty, and unemployment, if I understood you well. You could say that those are the four bases that you've talked, right? Yes. In some other articles, I've only talked about those four, but I've also mentioned in others, sustainability and the environment. But yes, that's the core of my ideas. Perfect, let's introduce those two. They're very important in the world and in Colombia as well. So let's add them as well. With your permission, let's include them. Could you briefly tell us Dr. De La Calle, about each of these bases, and if I understand well, more than just ideas, unfounded ideas, you want a convergence based on platforms, on well thought programs, more than phrases and slogans. So, could you tell us more about each one of these four or five now? Uh, bases and how do you see a platform that that's well founded for them you have understood me perfectly Ken we cannot focus on slogans alone politicians have such um, vague ideas everybody applauds them with great slogans but in Colombia particularly what happens is first you choose the the Congress and then you elect the president so it's very difficult that's the origin why every president really arrives with good votes but orphan because it has to seduce the congressman through um, lobbying and everything else. So it's like an schizophrenia because we have two separate worlds here. So I want to insist that the system and mechanism has to be inverse, but not based on slogans. So the exercise we have to do so that the public opinion can really understand, let's look at the big problems through specific questions of what would it you do. And let me give you an example. There's a serious problem now that's been over 150 years and it's access to land by peasants in Colombia because they don't have a dignified life. This differs from ideology. When we had the rural reform agreement in the Habana, it had nothing really to do with the agrarian reforms that wanted to pay with bonds to 20 years and so on. What we did in Havana was to respect the legality, creating an incentive and paths to access, to give access to land by those that needed it. And I've said this one in, in so many forums. For the first time, we had an agreement with the FARC that allowed the coexistence of different land exploitation systems, especially the great agro industry, which is a great opportunity for Colombia. It's the first time the gorilla says, I'm not gonna just stand only in large estates because of the globalization. Textually, that says in the document, signed by the FARC, we understand that there are other ways because we have to understand that Colombia is diverse we have problems in problems in Cauca, Putumayo, Nariño, north of Colombia, but there are extensive areas in Colombia for great agriculture. There, I have a positive note. I've heard that the Institute of Political Science, which is a very serious institute, understands that there are important elements in what was agreed in the peace agreement that opens options to find, lastly, something good. But again, the agrarian laws of 1917, back then there was already problems over land. So allow me to talk about this because this is very important. The mistake of Colombia is that it expanded the colonization beyond the agricultural boundary 
and turn this into just a service for the peasants. So the peasants were given the land to exploit it by a landlord and only was given the food to feed him and his family. And that stopped the entire economy and created an absence of mass of consumers, unlike what happened with the other countries next to us. Or in Asia, before being before boosting their countries, they made an agrarian reform. And the questions are to see if we agree. Are you willing to meet what was uh, what's set in the peace talk and the peace agreement? Yes or not? Why? Do you think it's possible financially to to boost the country in general? In a Colombia, it's more productive agriculturally because the small presence are even more productive than large companies. In short, that's that's what I wanted to say. Let's continue with equity, equality, or equitable conditions. We have many many problems when it comes to equity. There's an enormous discussions on taxes in Colombia. So are we really willing to make a progressive tax system that implies that especially the individuals, not as much corporations, really can pay more for all uh, to benefit all the rest of the Colombians? So start you can you can start to see a serious third. We're almost unanimously to have a more interventionist state. So we should ask the people up to where would you be? For instance, would, can we liquidate the HMOs? Yes or no? I mean, what I want to induce with this is how c can you set up a pension reform? Are the rich really... Um, aware that they have to to sacrifice and give in for the others because the idea is not always to get money out of the rich and period i mean we really have to think up something more more um much more detailed what i wanted to give you is an example right now there the two things are vital one to self-exclude and not to feel with when you self-exclude to be to be um, aggressive against i let's talk about pedro creating but i think that i for instance about creating like a gang against him to void everything he doesn't say is not good it's not healthy for the country it creates tensions that we don't need I'm listening a rhetoric of war from sectors that do not like him, saying that he's going to break communism and that we're turning communism into the bad wolf and the left sectors into enemies. And that's the key. What we did in Habana instead was, okay, with the FARC, if the fight doesn't exist, it's got only 50, it only received 50,000 votes, it doesn't exist. And why is it that people talk about Colombia being communist with them? It, it makes no sense. The, the, going back to the idea of turning them into enemies still increases the polarization and increases a lot of social disturbance. I have a lot to say, but with that, I think I answered your question. No, no, no. Thank you so much, Dr. De La Calle. There are several things to say. So we began with four bases for the convergence. We added sustainability to them. And if I'm not wrong, also, we added, or you added, agrarian reform. So... We have six, more or less, and we also understand that for you, there are line right, line red lines, and uh, let's talk about 
the peace talk or the peace agreement. So let's talk about other red lines to form that convergence to join or unite the center. However, before that, let's go back to the six bases and focus on some. Let's talk about security, which could be a platform or a policy on security that could join the center. And I imagine when you talk about center, you're talking center left and center center and center right to a certain point as well. So which could be a policy that could join those groups. That's a great topic. I think that what will take place, we will have a displacement in that center and that convergence. And I'm not talking about the extremes. To seek more security mechanisms. Security will become core, not only in equality, not only with social aspects, what ha we have seen with all these massacres is again a population that is extremely worried what's happening we're going back to the past and i understand that president duque doesn't want to see it that way and he's responded saying no this is from the past the massacres didn't come back they've never left but there was a statistical problem in there the truth really is that indeed this does come from the past. The government did not invent massacres. That's quite sectarian. But what's true is that after 2012, this is a number that we started to see disappear, but now brutally we're seeing the massacres again and creates a very negative impact on the nation. So that's security. So what should we do first? In the territories, this is linked to illegal drugs and crops. And we, we have our own red lines. In my opinion, there are two aspects. Criminal organizations, we have to fight against them. Colombia has that tragic history. But, and really, we have to fight with them. If we legalize the drug, they they will move on from drugs to money laundering or mining or other things because they exist and they will never have a civil life. But the problem with the crops is different. And theirs, we've had different paths. What we proposed and what was agreed with the peace agreement implied not to prohibit necessarily fumigation, this is one of the biggest lies. Never in Havana did we prohibit fumigation. You have to read the agreement. I mean, it's something amazing. What we said is the best was to initially seek voluntary substitution. It is difficult, yes. Expensive as well, yes. But it's not impossible. Indeed, now there are experiments that are successful. But what happened? Simultaneously, there's an increase of more illegal crops in Colombia. That's true. It's not bad. It's really bad for the country. And we have to wonder what happened. I have the figures. In 2012, it's the lowest uh, figure. And then it started to climb. What happened? What happened? What did the Minister of Defense? I mean, what happened to the government? Let's talk about this, frankly. That is a problem. But the solution, in my opinion, and for many others, cannot be to repeat policies that failed in the past, to have fumigation again and to have a war against coca. Cocaine is something. While we wait to reconnect with Dr. Lacadie, we will bring in the panel. Dr. Lacadie has said a number of things to this point. I think there's plenty food uh, for thought. So I'd like to invite the panelists, please, to unmute your, themselves and to open up their screens to begin having this conversation. Meanwhile, Marta 
will try to get hold of Dr. De La Calle. I see Gabriel, Poli, and Laura, and David will join. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We will have Dr. De La Calle back in immediately when we can. Gabriel, why don't I start with you about what you've heard so far? Your initial comments, please. I'm going to speak in Spanish. Oh, yes, yes, I'm sorry. But if you prefer I speak in English, no, in Spanish, please. Well, I wanted to say that although we're trying to leave in a void the discussion, talking just ideologically of what the center is, I think it, it's I think that what Umberto said was very important to determine not the values or ideals, but specific topics. Essentially, everything he, he discussed, I share the ideas that he's suggesting also. With regards to taxes, we have talked about that many times, as well as the other topics. But I believe that we cannot leave aside the context. And I have the theory that that context will determine what the center means. It cannot be disconnected from the political situation that we're experiencing, which in my opinion, I know it's quite controversial. There is a conspiracy against the 1991 Constitution a conspiracy against participative democracy, a conspiracy to assimilate, to become much more authoritarian and to have exceptional uh, powers for the executive. That is a, a model that rises from the right. So we cannot have a central ideology and disconnect it from the alternative proposal which is to change, to go against the Constitution, the justice system, and redetermine uh, the parties. So I think that's something I would add to this discussion. For me, number one mission of the center is to defend the Constitution. And in it, we have the platform is needed. Without the Constitution, it's important to have the elements that we need. That's really what I want to say. Thank you, Gabriel. Polly, any preliminary comments? Yes, thank you. I would like to talk about the vision. I think that in the process to de define a center, we have the questions, okay, what's a center? It's defined of what is not in, in the extreme, so we cannot have this vision that's so centralized, urban, of large groups or ideas or leaders and to keep the gap with the region. So how do we have this discussion? Because the other point is that the center needs a lot of political education. While the extremes operate because of their emotions, the center is given when there's a lot of education and political work that should begin in regions. Right now, obviously, what Mr. Umberto is saying uh, is very important, but I have to doubt. Where is the, where are women? Where are specific um, policies for young people, women, vulnerable groups, really for the regions? Because I'm afraid that we'll fall back on the same thing. The coalitions and definitions that do not keep in mind that other country that has been hurt at, for a long time since the final agreement has been given the opportunity to tell the, the urban country or, or other uh, instances. And when it comes to security, I think it's part of the red lines. It's to question the security policy deeply. 
what's happening with the security forces of the country that will be something we have to reflect upon as well thank you Paulie Lauda do you have any comments yes my first preliminary con comment is that what Umberto Aracadi has said is that more than ideology the center is a process and this is what I mean you have the trend to think that there's a line on the political spectrum and that we're setting set order leave on the line and the center's in the middle of the line we have the left we have the right extremes but really things aren't that black and white we have multiple people have multiple identities they like different things people have different ideas let me give you an example reading a, a book of Bolton and everybody is talking about the Trump administration you heard the surprise of president surprise when he realized that those that really celebrated moving the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem were the eval evangelical people so that's when I talk what that the center is not an ideology there are multiple identities and the center refers as more to processes it's a process in which we know what we're not and not necessarily what we are I mean when he talk about self-exclusion he's talking about a process and that's something that we can address more but I think it's very important because to ask the center today to say exactly what it thinks about each item. I mean, there has to be a programmatic agenda or basic points. But to ask the center now, which is its center now? No, I don't think it's the w most proper way to conquer the hearts of the Colombians today. Thank you, Laura. Now we have Mr. De La Cadia back. Did you hear the preliminary comments? And then we'll, if you did, then we'll go back. David, comments? There, yes, we can hear you. Let me be brief. I believe that when we have polarizations, every extreme is stuck in its own positions to create fear among the population to try to divide even more and it's something that i agree with Humberto de la Calle is that we do have to reach agreements on fundamental topics aspects which are very important for the overall population seeking the common good and those topics like fighting poverty everything has to do with policies and health care tax tax etc i think there we have to look for some goals clear objectives for those that will design programs around those topics at least have an agreement at, or keep in mind those clear objectives so so when they design the program they follow those objectives or something like a structural reform Colombia talks about structural reforms every day but we don't know which are the objectives why for instance do you make a health care reform if you start to ask people about the objectives you will find different objectives so if we don't have clear objectives we should not start to discuss this what we'll have is more polarization and more problems so what I would like is to state first we have to have a discussion to reach agreements that are very basic on the topics that are fundamental including population groups including very serious problems 
such as different population groups i think that there we have to reach agreements before saying what we want to change thank you that mean thank you all doctor that i got you you heard at least the comments at least of David. I don't know if you heard those of Laura as well. Would you like to make any comments of what you heard to start again? No. I, I just heard David and I agree entirely with him, but I didn't hear the others. I would have loved to. Laura, could you please repeat briefly your comment? on a center about a center if i understood you well is it's it's quite complicated there are many topics and it's very difficult to define a center per se because everybody has different motivations etc or perhaps i didn't understand your comment no what i said umberto is that when i hear you what i'm asking myself is the center isn't an ide ideology, it's a process, a process of liberation. Obviously, we have, when it comes to the elections, we have to have an agenda, that's clear. But I, you talk much more about processes than anything else. And in the process is where we, we, we have to distinguish ourselves, the commitments we make, and the type of liberation that we're going to talk about to the country. There's what we identify the center with because I would dare, I dare to say that to think that the po politics are just a line and that everybody is in, in the center and that's, and they're always going to be standing on the same point of the line. Of the, of the political spectrum. For instance, somebody can be very progressive in one thing, but very conservative in others. So where do I stand on that spectrum? So I think that what you said was to identify the red lines that we can. I don't know if I interpreted wrong. I think that's what we all really understand. Dr. De La Calle, what do you think? Let me precise what I've said a bit more because probably, maybe because I, I was lost here with the sign. You understood well, Laura, but only partly. When I emphasize processes, it's because the traditional process, people always, they always end up in mechanics. No, what we have to do, do we have to make a referendum in March? No, in December, no. So that, there we have a big problem because there we have a dispersal of the democratic conversions. We need, we have very good um, things that we follow and we don't follow. The idea is, is not to hide what we need, it's to reach them. Red lines, for instance. Let me give you my personal opinion. The, so, the rule of law of private of private law that's good for those that don't agree then don't step aside so those are the criteria that i have they're not absolute obviously politics are variable but if you have the goals you can deal with everything else and to leave ample space to discuss many things they that don't have to be the core for 2022 We've talked about the fundamentals, but we, we only have a slogan right now. What's fundamental here? There's, what, what, that's what we have to discuss. And if we do not precise that, before we choose the people, the candidates, we, we're not gonna know. I mean, the first thing, the first agreement on the fundamental is to disagree. Yes, exactly, but, but the first agreement, or let's say the, the point where we meet is not if we agree, if we need a reform on healthcare or not. It's a 
the language used. And there, when you talk about self-exclusion, well, people, people will self-exclude. And I think there, I mean, there's a book called The Vital Center of, of Arthur Schlesinger, and he says, in the vital center, what we need is audacious moderation. And that is what you're talking about in terms of the center. Yes, exactly. We have those that consider themselves in the center. There are extremes that they don't want at all for Colombia. But to have more credibility, we have to take an extra step to tell the public opinion that is tired of the parties and of the politicians that they don't, and that when they talk about programs, it's 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 uh, bribes and contracts. So the idea is let's get out of the framework, and the discussion I want is to avoid prosecutions. Now what I'm hearing is that right before there are persons whose rivals are stigmatizing them without even having the opportunity to know how we can reach an agreement. Because if we don't have it, the person self-excluded cannot claim to society that the person was excluded, the person self-excluded. In short, let me be very specific and clear. I, I think it's bad. And that the private sector has stigmatized Pedro. I do not agree with Pedro. I think it's very radical, but it's a it's his decision to see if he wants to be part of the framework of the center or not, avoiding the phenomenon of exclusion. If the people say that he's a victim. That's that's something bad, and it becomes dangerous, even dangerous, because social and political tensions will rise by 2022. We didn't want. I didn't want to talk about people, personal situations, but I think I'm trying to under, make you understand. Polly Gabriel. He, they, Dr. De La Calle has just talked about the private sector. Let me ask you, Dr. De La Calle, I wonder, are you talking about the old rivalry with the left? I mean, you're saying you can include people center-right? or or not what gives you the impression that there are people of center right that will agree with what you're saying categorically i would say that everybody will understand this i mean we're against extremes that's the first thing we we've had the moderate right really successfully many and we had the National Front and, and beyond the defects, it integrated a mass of the center, center left, and center right. So my, personally, I, 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 I would say, yes, we have to call the center right and everybody starts to see if that framework is good or not. Personally, I think if we have an agreement to not amend what was made in the peace agreement or not amend it unilaterally, at least, that's, that's, that's important. And if we reach an agreement to continue with our Constitution having the rule of law and those that are on the right that accept this, I think that they should be welcome. I think that what's serious are the that what's really bad are the extremes. Let me give you examples of extremes. The proposal 
that congressmen should have a college degree. I think it's a nonsense. It's futile. But it's serious because it shows that the sense of equality is not headed towards equality, but we're stepping back. And it's nonsense having a college degree. It doesn't define a society that wants to be equal. That's a small example. A second example, the rights of minorities today are part of the democracy. Democracy has one face that governs the moderate, the, the majority, but the other side, which is stronger, are the rights of the minorities, the proposal to, to submit in the constitutional uh, the, the Constitution to referendum is 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 terrible. It's it's going through it's it's like a lack of knowledge of the rights of minorities that are sacred in a democracy that's that those are the types of things. So if we exclude or self exclude both extremes on that framework, we can talk about persons and mechanisms. But that's but I don't want to talk about mechanisms. And again, what I said early on, I don't want to I don't want to get be part of pictures. I think it's an abuse. I'm too old to to be to be just bothered. I just want to help Colombians. Doctor Delacati. To create a convergence uh, worldwide every group and every person needs to make sacrifices things that they want to have but can't to create that conversions that's a practice of sacrifice you have talked about the six bases and other ideas so i wonder again to create a conversions What can be sacrificed for, by you to include the people of center, center, center rights? What are you willing to sacrifice? Necessarily, I would like to frame my answer in the collective exercise, not only what I think, because what I'm trying to see is at least in this phase, is to depersonalize. But in my personal case, it's not concessions, really. Going back to private property and market freedom. In the peace agreement, when the agreement, the, after the referendum, we emphasize the rural topic that I already discussed and the chance of the agro industry you could think if it was a true exercise of what could be improved in the peace agreements based on the counterpart because what I think is very dangerous to say no the gentlemen already left their weapons they accept democracy so now I'm going to impose on them unilaterally changes on the agreement that's not loyal that's you do not take away the other weapons and say hey forget it you only got 50,000 votes and goodbye no but let's say let me give you an idea the commission of recognition if we have to enter magistrates chosen in a way that provides more credibility to the central right sectors, that would be good. Because I thought that we created an impeccable panel, but there are people that do not um, trust the Constitution. Let's have those discussions openly. I don't think we have to, to not discuss this, provided, of course, the purpose is to avoid populism. Because what will happen in 2022 is that we'll have chaos. Who was Chavez? He was a colonel that reached the power and and as in a smack, in just a smack, 
he what he finished democracy why because it was so weak and so degraded so the constitution is has norms but here let's be true the the leaders of Colombia have closed their eyes to the corrupt local corruption locally things have not changed and the big leaders say oh it's that this person gives the, so many votes but the guy is corrupt I don't care that's his problem I mean there's a rupture in the ethical part in the center of the elite and what's happening in the territories this is something we have to face seriously because the other th stuff is rhetoric thank you Dr. De La Calle Gabriel thank you for your patience it's your turn do you have any comments yes before Humberto returned we cannot get out of context in Colombia right now in, pol in the politics this discussion for instance I have no doubt that there's a conspiracy against the Constitution that's openly expressed nobody is embarrassed to say that they want to go against the Constitution the judiciary branches nobody is embarrassed to even say it and that shows what the center will do so I do agree with Humberto that there are some red lines and the first one is the 91 Constitution there are enough tools in this Constitution to meet the five goals and work with them efficiently with popular participation so if you don't have a cons an initial consensus there are two elements of first the Constitution second the peace agreement if you don't have that framework that you want to create it's very hard because both extremes are against in their own way th those two fundamental goals for a f feasible center so you could begin with the Constitution and then with the peace agreement thank you Gaudian so if I understood you well besides the, the topics that we began w with Dr. De La Calle we also mentioned the red lines he talked about the peace agreement and you're talking about not touching or destroying the Constitution right that's another red line if I understood you well you can touch it yes but not as a result of a conspiracy in favor of a particular group thank you for your clarification Polly please what I was saying and I agree with Laura that the center is mobile it's not static part of its it, it, it's really a, its center is moving many times those that are not interested get out quote unquote from the boundary from the from the framework but the problem that I see or the better the challenge of the center is the political education that the country and society needs for it there's an enormous challenge how Colombians can understand it and to not have that rupture that Umberto discussed between the group of people in Bogota versus the regions I know that the local policies have different realities to the, those of Bogota the large cities Medellin, Bogota, Cali, Barranquilla the big centers do not have the same realities of Bogota so talking about a center without keeping in mind that country that has manifested with very powerful minorities of women I mean that's a red line gender not only programs I mean what happens with women with the minorities indeed that they feel represented and can make a contribution and be part of that framework that's that's the point that I wanted to address thank you Polly I'm going to ask David but before Dr. Dr. Lacanya would you like to answer 
what has been said by Pauli and Gabriel so far. Sure, what Gabriel said, I, I, I entirely agree. I mean, what he said is perfect. I entirely agree. Adding, when I talked about keeping the essence of the rule of law, I understand that there need that there are changes needed. Yes, today nobody doubts that we need to make some changes, and just being present in the Constitution and creating the Constitution. And just as we made a mistake, yes because we thought that involving the courts in the election of control entities would create a law. And it's that the good apples would improve the bad apples, but that's the other, that's the other way. So what happened is that there is a politicization of justice, but that's different to have a person that's, in, being, in, that's being in court being judged and wants to destroy the judicial system. So we do need reforms, but we shouldn't avoid them emotionally. And Polly has said perfectly, lately we see the creation of frictions from many sides, from different sources, with the purpose, as David said, to create fear we uh, have a fear, a policy of uh, fear. Sartre said there's a policy of silence. Who can be more fearful? Let me give you an example. Now that Pauli talked about women, the Colombian women, due to the uh, peace agreement, has lived ex a bad experience because it was invented that that ge female gender was being uh, focused on the peace agreement. What we wanted is that the Colombian women is the most, has been the worst victim as a mother, as a wife. So there, it's, I've heard amazing, amazing um, lies. Extremists have even said that the peace agreement said that there was a thunderstorm with uh, um, saying that I was a homosexual. So there's a mood that's so adverse that delayed the process to acknowledge the rights of women and sexual minorities. I mean, that is the most perverse way of, of changing things, creating fear, fictions, with the purpose of terrifying everybody. And I think that that's very damaging. Thank you, Dr. De La Calle. David, thank you for your patience again. You've heard a lot, especially the comments made about the private sector made by Dr. De La Calle. Do you have any comments about this, I have something important that I'm thinking about. For me, the center, like any political trend, should seek the common good. But there's something that's related very good with the center and it's sustainability. Not to propose things that end sustainability, the economic sustainability, the respecting human rights, I mean sus the environmental sustainability to mention few. Because without sustainability, there is no policy proposed that will achieve the common good. At the end, everything will roll back. And we see clearly this in examples like those we've seen in, in Venezuela. So I believe that sustainability requires moderation and something else that's important, and it's good faith. Because now that we were talking about populism, populism can be disguised, even of, uh, of many things, even of center, and it disguises very well in politicians today 
tend to say things that people want to hear, that people like. But when they arrive to, to power, things change and they have their own agenda that is not for the common good nor sustainable. So I think that good faith, and in this, Humberto, it would be good to define how can we assure that the good faith will prevail among those that want to make a central coalition and that the personal agendas can remain aside. Thank you, David. But, Lester, would you like to talk about would you like David to talk about the private? No, you're on a roll, David, so you can continue. On the private sector, I think that, that there are important aspects we should keep in mind. Last year, the gentleman from the Business Roundtable made a very important statement on what should be a private enterprise and what it should pursue. And it's not only to maximize profits, as many companies today in the world and in Colombia and everywhere think that that is the main objective. An enterprise is sustainable if it's useful for society. An enterprise that does not contribute to social improvements, either solving problems for people, because enterprises are not to enrich their owners, but to create collective wealth, meaning when everybody does well. We've talked about this a lot. We have cap the conscious uh, capitalism, and it's very clear. And I think in the world, the business people are called seriously to reflect upon the purpose of the private sector because we have very negative narratives around us because we're not we're the ones that are building them. And that's bad because we are fundamental for a country to be sustainable, to create jobs, to create wealth, economic growth, and social improvements, but not with goals like enriching the owners the private sector has to be much more inclusive in its products and its solutions. And we cannot continue measure ourselves through financial indicators alone. I think that for companies to be sustainable, they have to be profitable, of course. But that's not the only thing. We need to have social profitability and contribute to society. And now in the world, that's clear. Besides, we have to contribute to protect the environment. Because if now, this year, the COVID has given us a lesson to the entire mankind of what could be a pandemic or a disaster, climate change is a disaster that comes has been developing very quickly and we are all responsible for it. And if we don't pay attention to that, when we have the true effects of climate change, it's not reversible. We don't have a vaccine for that. Something that can be developed, like in the case of the COVID. So that's what I would talk about the private sector. And it contributes a lot to the developments, and I defend it. I defend the free market economy with the restrictions it should have, yes. But also, I would like to call for the business people's responsibility and their role in society. Thank you, David. Dr. De La Calle, there's a lot to discuss and think about with the comments made by David. Would you like to make a comment? Yes, a brief, several comments really. I agree with what David has said, and I really agree with his, his vision. However, let me give you some details. He talked about sustainability. 
and it really it ties with populism the problem of populism is that it exists but it cannot be defined nobody says i'm a populist it's an insult to to give a bad name to others and it's got a histrionic capacity it could be disguised of anything but really it doesn't have good purposes only per, for personal benefits using different techniques the way the thermometer to detect the degree of populism of a proposal has to do with sustainability. For instance, a politician says in Colombia, we have to stop using fossil fuels. And you say, yeah, sure, mankind wants that. That's, we want alternative sources. But then he says, I'll do it only in four years. There's where also the timetable is important because in Colombia and in any country that doesn't want to use fossil fuels, there's got to be a transition process that cannot be made in only four years. So the questions in terms of sustainability is, so Mr. Candidate, what do you promise to do in those four years? If we have the red line back again in my story, it's impossible to make that transfer in only four years, the same with mining and others. So I absolutely agree that the core value of the private economy and the businesses and the private sector, the Constitution of 91 really made a change. And it's that competition became a right. Before, you would say, yeah, compete, but it's against a monopoly. But I, as a citizen, have, I am entitled to compete and on that basis you open the path to eliminate economies in Colombia that have been bad. We have capitalism and rentism. We have had a lot of rentism in Colombia. It was better to have a good friend in the monetary board than to be truly productive and to compete. Rentism has to increase and decrease in favor of capitalism and the uh, conscious capitalism is the line in this term. Also, we are moving towards the state. The pandemic, generally, all of the economists have said that we'll need more state-owned tools. And in Colombia, informality is high because the efforts made by the government, good, bad, or whatever, to help everybody is because is not good because there's a lot of people that are in the informals. I mean, there are no list. They don't exist. In Argentina, they did something interesting. They opened the popular records list. So informals and list. And with that, they started to build the database. But since we'll be moving towards the state, we clearly have to understand what David said. We cannot reach statism. That has failed all over the world. I don't think that's the best solution to seek social e equitable conditions. I think that the private sector really is the one that provides and creates the most jobs. That's where, that's where I stand. Okay, that topic of the sector, private, is, uh, private sector is very important. David. No, Laura also. Da David, before that. Would you like to answer this? This is a discussion that you have now with Dr. De La Calle, would you like to answer what he said? I think that what Umberto has said really goes hand in hand with what I said. However, I want him to talk about a bit more about how the center coalitions will reach the good faith from those that join it because we have these disguised um, wolves 
that make things so difficult? That's a big topic and it's hard to answer because many of the things that are built by humans' laws become problems more of human beings. For instance, I already talked about the errors made in justice, but it's also because of humans that make mistakes, especially people that work in the justice system without good faith. So to create a system where you can measure the good faith is, is very difficult. That must be judged by the community, which, which votes and makes decisions. But I do acknowledge that after our tragedies and all, we do not think that the antagonist has good faith. So we've, got, we've turned the antagonist into an enemy. So uh, something core of this convergence has to be based on the commitment of good faith. What happened here at the end of the times of violence in Colombia? Two leaders sat down and it was almost unthinkable that they would, Laureano Gomez and Alberto Lleras. They sat down and on a basis of a conversation unimaginable back then, they reached a proposal to join political forces that was efficient in terms of the violence within the parties. We had, at a time, five or seven murders for 100,000 persons. Again, we have the polarization and the rest of their history, everybody knows. But how did that work? It became a norm first through a referendum of the 50, of 1957. You, you can always vi uh, violate the, the Constitution, go against it, because even with that constitutional norm, this could, could have been bad. But the key was not only the Constitution per se, but the good faith of both leaders. We have to acknowledge that when the followers of Laureano were outside of the government, they did not destroy the pact at all. And the good faith is found in different spheres. Let me give you another piece of history. During the Barco government and the talks made with an M19, which were based on the good faith, the core was, okay, let's meet what we want. So we had Pizarro, and he was killed. And Antonio Navarro asked for an appointment with Barco, and Barco said, the process is over. And M19 went back to the, the weapons. Navarro says, Mr. Barco, we give you our word, and I want to continue. And whatever is said about M19, whatever, those gentlemen have met democracy. They have not gone back to the weapons. The, the guerrilla has made terrible, committed terrible um, weapons. We have dissidents that are tra traitors and, and we have to go against them, yes. But we cannot stop seeing that the most powerful guerrilla let us destroy their weapons. The response may be fall short, may fall short, David, but David, you're right. People do have to judge that this is not, and maybe Laura discussed this, it's not more about, about policy and legislation. It has to do with the people. Laura, thank you for your patience. Do you have any comments? It could be of what Dr. Lacalle said, or what Polly or what Laura and others said. Respectfully, I go back to what Polly said. This proposal of the center cannot be built 
top to bottom. And I would like to deepen on that. First, I think we need to get out of this idea that the center is a mass of people lost, trapped between the extremes that we have to rescue, and that the politicians will try to rescue. I think that that is something that we have to get out of our head. Second, the second idea that we have to get out of our mind is that the center is the people that's in favor of the fundamental freedoms and is more conservative economically. No. Let me give you an example. I work with social leaders, female social leaders, and they're here in the center with us. But for instance, when it comes to homosexual or same-sex in marriage is something that they're not, they don't agree with. So we have to ha have people that will not agree with us in everything. So that's why I think that the proposal of the center has to be uh, only a fundamentals, not to talk about very specific things because if we do that, we'll never agree. And the self-exclusion that Umberto talks about will be more and more deeper. And there are five fundamentals topics that Dr. Umberto talked. One is the peace agreement. It's not even the peace agreement. It's the 120-page document. More than that is to not destroy unilaterally that peace agreement. That should be a red line. The second red line has to be the economic reform. I mean, a structural tax reform that we've been promised for the last 30 years. Third, has to do with the defense of fundamental rights. We cannot ask people to go at the same pace than we are. I mean, here we have a rural Colombia as well. The center has changed. 50 years ago, it's very different. Today, it's conventional wisdom. So also, we have to give time for people to uh, follow our pace. We think that we're a bit more progressive. The fourth red line, which is very fundamental, is an agreement against corruption. And fifth, this is personal, I think that we need a higher education reform because here is a big problem, is that we're not including or talking with young people. We're making a proposal by the big political leaders, but, but these leaders are not inviting the young people, young adults, why? I think that we have to give space to that center to visualize and let that let it express itself. Who's watching them? We're looking at the extremes, but the proposals of the political leaders do not visualize the center. We have to invite them and start talking with them now so that the central people, when we have the boundaries, when we have the framework, could it be legitimized through discussions with them. I don't think that today in Colombia we have a top a top bottom uh, proposal has any future. I think we should combine both things and start now. Thank you, Laura. So we add a reform of the educational system to the basis, if I understood you well. Gabriel, any comments? Gabriel, you, you're mute. I was saying, along with what Laura said, we're forgetting that before the pandemic, the crisis, 
there was a movement that could gather a very large number of citizens led by students and it was cross traded by the coronavirus it was growing it was consolidating a new political proposal but it was suspended it wasn't eliminated the forces for those marches and right now the forces that are cooking in the social crisis behind the pandemic will produce something that's telluric it will move this country and that can be a, a cassandra or negative attitude but really social forces are uncontainable and they will be manifested in the next months and years and i think that we cannot think of a center that's giving its back to this group it's outside of the system but it's very relevant for the system so i think that that's something we have to include to handle how to build the proposal uh, the to build the center also i'd say i'd like to talk about the private sector and i'd like to say that the private sector has an attitude that is not perceived and that's why its image has has degraded we do not see the private sector going hand in hand with democracy and the institutions it gets it's fearful the fear that david uh, that david has mentioned leads them to run to think that the solution is going towards the right uh, not everybody but i've seen that and i believe that this is a very dangerous attitude and the first thing that the private sector should do is to understand that what's better for its interest is to defend democracy and to participate in building a center to acknowledge what's un unavoidable we we really have to make changes in the country so i th i think those two points to integrate social movements that are taking alternative paths and to convince the private sector that it's not good to be in the extreme right because socially there's an outbreak there those are two very important things to create a good center thank you gabriel david would you like to answer i would pref prefer polly to answer <laughs> she hasn't talked for a long time since Gavia mentioned the private sector now let's get let's give Davi time to think yeah he's giving me the he's letting me talk because he wants to think it over <laughs> let's begin Polly with you or with Davi no let me talk thank you I would I would like to talk about the red line about the counterweights the counterparties because all the counterparties as we've seen today are diluting uh, that's the first thing another topic that's important has to do with the legalization not because it happens in a void we know that that won't happen in the void I think it's an element for Colombia. I mean, where are we innovating really in our narrative in a, as a country proposal? And since I move in communications, how do we move from aspiration to inspiration? Tamala Harris said in her talk, what's the soul of the states? And North Americans are great for that. Then that pay to riotic sense. However, I ask myself, what's the true narrative ahead that we can talk about with so many different ages and colors and everything else i can't find that i remember Uribe with his 2% he he inspired the country with security then santos inspired country with the peace 
So these are two extremes that you ha have in the spectrum, leaving aside the economic issues. So how can we institutionally inspire the center that we're going to join? Yes, it's important. But where are the tools that say, OK, I'm going to, to really follow these people? There are many, many people know who are the center. So we're, what sets us apart? That's something that you should work urgently on. Very important. David, thank you for being a, such a gentleman. <laughs> OK. I would like to say several things. One, inclusion is something that creates a lot of headaches because we've had a very exclusion, exclusive uh, system. We've got women, minorities. But when we are going to sit down and discuss public policies or problems in the country, we try, as Laura said, to make top to, bo top to bottom proposals. But I think that inclusion is fundamental in all this. And that would, we have to listen to every sector to be able to create goals, very basic, very general, yes, that include the voices of many. Because we're used to not keep in mind a lot of people. And going back to the enterprises and to what Gabriel said, I, I agree that the private enterprise has not built its own narrative. And there are very good private companies in Colombia, so have been rented. As Humberto said before, that capture, capture rentist, and that's very worrisome. So we may, we need tax and economic reforms, yes. But we cannot be favoring several companies or people that want to take advantage of situations that create inequalities. So I believe that competition is something that we have to work on a lot. Uh, we know that companies can be very successful without subsidies. Some are, some stimuli is needed, but it has to be accessed by everybody, not but not by a few. And that's something that we have to determine. And it's time, because every time we talk about tax reform, well, we hear things. Yeah, I want a tax reform, but as a business person, I'm not willing to pay more taxes. Yeah, if it's structural, we all have to pitch in. And we have to stop having exceptions for very few. When is something is structural, it must be equitable, it must be fair, and it means that everybody should access to what has been proposed. And there we have to make changes and we have to be willing as business people to sacrifice some things from the past and cause a lot of headaches. So that's on, on the one hand. The ethics of the business group community is also important. For instance, the other branch case really, really hurt the private sector because those that disagree with the establishment immediately generalize all of the companies are corrupt and they pay bribes and to gain contracts they do whatever and that's not true most of the companies are good they act act with ethics but the few that take advantage of those situations make an enormous damage to a sector that's so important for the economy of a country. Thank you, David. Dr. De La Calle, it's your turn. Would you like to make a comment 
what others have said. We've got 20 minutes left and then the idea is to go to the core message of this converse, of this discussion. What basis do you have or Columbia have to advance towards the convergence we, we talked about? We began with four, now we have many more. And there are several comments on how it's done. The youth, Lauda talked about how to do it as well. So with these few minutes we have left, let's talk about where are we headed? What's the proposal? So Dr. De La Calle, let's begin with you. Please. Three brief things. What Laura said that the about the top bottom, I think it's it's a great idea. I don't think it's incompatible with what I've said, but it's useful and uh, it makes sense. And the other things could be like politicians doing the same thing as always, but we have to look at, at that top bottom. Second, Gabriel talked about November 21st. Back then, there was a situation of huge insatisfaction that has been placed in the freezer because of the pandemic, and it will come back with worse scenarios, and it's the social problems. Now we have such high unemployment rates and everything is, 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 is really troublesome right now. So that's something we have to keep in mind, yes. Because if we have to integrate this group to non-radical solutions, that would be great. Third, Boldy talk about the counterparties. It shows that the norms are not only made. Colombians have a, a fetish to create norms if there's a problem, you, you, you enact the law and that's it. But that's not how things should be. Controls are well designed in the Constitution to choose the control entities to create good controls. But in practice, there are problems today. There's a worry that Pauli mentioned on the control entities that could be gathered under the same beacon and uh, don't want to hear different sectors of society. And the constitutional control is very important. Really, a country that follows, that has a constitution, has great um, courts. Let me tell you a story. I was a member of the Supreme Court when it was in charge in a large room, it worked in a large room. The idea is to have just one court. One court creates the following problems. The Constitution is in the hands of specialized disciplines. So you really lose the constitutional foundation. It's not only legal because constitutional courts are part of the architecture. They have powers over the others because they are the voice of the Constitution. They're judicial, but they don't only have the constitutional rationale that's needed. So that's a really bad idea. But in practice, it's destructive. We, every Wednesday afternoon, addressed everything, looking at the premise, the Constitution, the law, ergo, is it constitutional or not? It was a theoretical exercise that had nothing to do with the person. When we created the tutela, we gave we gave the Constitution more flesh and blood. We we started to see that things were not so resolved Wednesdays afternoons like before. Today we have a Constitution more for social purposes. So the elimination is is really a, a setback. And now that the control entities are majorities now, but 
we have to take care of the constitutional court. Lauda said something important many times. The court is like the drive. It's like the engine. When it comes to, to moral uh, situations, we cannot be intolerant. Since I'm tolerant, I condemn you to the dark ages. So I think that in the center, we can coexist with different visions. And then David really underscored a problem and shared ideas that I, I really share with him. But going back to the problem, I think that we have other types of problems. I entirely agree with uh, the educational reform, but that's part of equality. It's more taxonomy involved. It's not only making a glossary, but it, the idea is to look at the soul. It could be difficult to define, but we all know what it is to be of a center in the center and what it is not to be in, in the extremes. That's the soul of the political um, project. Regarding Laura, this should be limited to very general things. I do worry because that exercise, being too general, has been apparently made by politicians. I mean, politicians talk and talk and they have their slogans in the campaign, but when, when we have a president, the president does, does little. It's those of us that have been, I'm sorry, my, my laptop is running out of batteries. Let me connect it here. The idea, after being a presidential, uh, in the presidential campaign, there are many topics, that there are many, that there, everybody knows that the cabinet, I, I propose something, and then with the Congress, I have to start looking at Congress and change my things. So I think that we do need general things, but we also need specifics. We can't go through some rhetoric and then say, no, I've got a friend here, let's, let's uh, let him do things differently. We need a, truly proce a true process of coalition. The ingredient from the bottom up really gives way to leaders that I think in Colombia has been has been something that we've seen very little because the president arrives when the Congress is already elected has to go conqu conquest or con yeah attract the Congress people and that leads to the bribes and everything else so let's say okay we want equality but I think that we do need some more specifics. We, we've got to be more dogmatic. The key word in Colombia today, unfortunately, is uncertainty, politically and socially and everything else. However, just to simplify, you can gather this under different concepts. Ken already mentioned the five bases I have always keeping in mind, of course, the idea that we don't want this to be a straitjacket. And we know that the politics have to be variable. There are events that change things, but the soul, the soul, the core is what's important. And I'd like to end, because I already spoke more than an hour. This is your panel. I should be taking your time. And I'd like to end talking about what Gabriel Silva, the soul is in the chance of finding, of finding uh, the best, not destroying the constitution and not destroying the peace agreement unilaterally. Thank you, Dr. Lacadie. The entire format has changed. So go, let's go back to Laura 
and Dr. De La Calle. Laura, Dr. De La Calle mentioned you several times. Would you like to make any comments? And then we'll listen to Gabriel because he was mentioned as well. No, I think that we agree in the fundamentals. Obviously, we need to have a program with specific programs that tie those that will be elected. And there's something that Uventer mentioned several times that I think is very important. In this democratic convergence, we cannot have a president that's elected that thinks that he will arrive alone. Everybody that participates in the center, everybody will be part of the programmatic agenda. And I think that's important because what happened in the last election is that whoever wanted to be in the center say, you can be part of, if you're with me, we don't build together uh, proposals. But here the shift is very important. We cannot lose the, what, what Umberto has said. I think it's a proposal that's very different to what was said with Pedro and Fajardo in the past elections. It's a fundamental difference, which I hope that Umberto and Mr. Fajardo clearly have them now. I just wanted to say something else, Umberto. One thing is to have specific proposals on fundamental aspects, and the other is to cover everything. When you try to cover everything, you f you make people fearful. And I think we shouldn't do that. Now, we have lost people. So I think we have to be a bit more pragmatic. The level of detail that we will uh, share with the people, we can, we can talk, walk on the middle line, looking at different levels. But we have to advance now, because we always think that we can do things at the last minute, and no, it's time. The time is now. How can you limit those topics? If it's too extensive, it's impossible to forge a kind of convergence. So how's the task of limiting and to join the, the Bori politic to a program or a common purpose? How can, what's the task behind it? And Gabriel, I'll have the same question for you. But since we're talking about this right now, Laura, we all know that the large central leaders are joining, they're talking, they're going to reach a proposal. I think that that proposal must be listened to. And now, some type of discussion with that center, which we think we know, but we don't know, is important. And to start from there, what are they really saying? Where are they? What, what's the people saying? What, what, what's, I don't think it's very difficult to do it. And from there, we can have some topics. I think the big topics are more or less defined because they're evident. I mean, the big ones, the red lines. But I think that there we could complement them with a process of participation, which could be quite innovative if we do it online. Thank you, Gabriel. How can we limit this? And the other question, a bit late, but part of the problem is that we have to leave, we, we have to give more space to politicians that are not as infected by the extreme. So how do you think we could do that? Um, 
if, if I would have a good answer, I think we would live in paradise. However, I would like to underscore something that I've heard from all of you. Polly said that we need a message that really identifies the center. Although I don't have the word, I know that the center is against margination of the of having Colombians that are not, don't feel part of how do you find the word that's that's for the communications um, creators but in Colombia everything that we've said so far people feel alienated excluded from institutions and that's why Laura's proposal and I think that Umberto working from bottom up and also David mentioned the private sector, the idea is to include, to break that hate that people have more and more against the government. And this is only done by inclusion, only in this setting and in all the settings but we have to work in other settings and that requires a lot of work so the idea is for people to participate and feel that they're part of building the message we need a program in which people feel that is theirs and that and we have to work hard for that may i add something just one thing i would like to say this i believe that wrinkles do count in the U.S. But that's good for me at least, yeah. I'm talking about people that, that's, that have uh, ruled countries without wrinkles, but I believe that wrinkles are good. What I do believe is that we have to be able to talk to young people right now the construction of the center is not including them despite what's happened on november 21st i think that things can be done at the same time and both things can be done i just wanted to leave that clearly because biden he's 77 he'll be elected hopefully okay let's see we hope so yeah we'll see you will see Polly, David needs to leave in two minutes. David, let's listen to you before you leave. And then we'll close the session with Umberto Lacadi. Is that okay for you? Yes. First of all, I'd like to say for me, it's been an enormous pleasure to participate with all of you. I've learned a lot. And I believe that we have many points in common. I still believe that Umberto's idea is very important and we have to work hard to achieve it because indeed the polarized forces today are, are gaining space and um, that's not good and the population is being led by them. It's like a circus. And uh, I think we have to work hard because truly, I believe that most of the people like to look at things with more moderation. Obviously, thinking in the common good, thinking that things should be solving our true problems. And when somebody has a good narrative of the center, people really like it. So I think that we have to work on that. Always, of course, keeping in mind uh, coherence, meaning what we say it's because we really believe it. And it's our re it's really part of our agenda. It's what we're seeking for the good of many. Not because it sounds good, 
and that way I can get votes. So we have a lot to do here. Thank you all, your invitation, and really for me, it's been a pleasure to be with all of you. I wish you a good day. Thank you so much, Debbie. Goodbye. Polly, you're next, and then we'll close with Dr. De La Calle. There's a proposal that could be naive, but those discussions with the leaders that will participate and are there should be transparent. I, if not a commission of truth, a coalition of truth, it would be very important for the country to do, the, instead of doing things behind doors, and to, I, th I think that that same discussion should be made publicly in the country should hear this because it could be very educational for everybody. So Humberto, you've got enormous experience in your negotiation and to manage to join proposals, at least positive intentions. I think that would change and force other parties to do the same exercise. Thank you, Polly. The Canadians can be the moderator of that type of discussion if you want. <laughs> Dr. De La Calle, we began with you and we end with you, please. Okay, as David said, I did learn a lot and I love this exercise. I think we have to continue doing this and persist on Polly's idea that, that this could be a public exercise, not a conclave, waiting for the white smoke is a good idea and as and essentially what we seek is to forget to hate and learn to be inclusive that's the true purpose of an exercise of this nature thank you ken all the people that participated that have helped us in this great meeting and let's have it again because here and after an exercise like this is what Colombians deserve. Thank you all. Thank you. We'll set another date and we can continue with this topic. Thank you so much, Dr. David, Poli, Laura, and Gabriel, our interpreter, and everybody that has been part of this and joined us in the webinar. As I said initially, this won't be the last webinar we'll be having on this topic. We have others. And this has been recorded, remember. And you can download it from ccacanada.com. Tomorrow, the, tonight or, or tomorrow, you can have that recording. Have a great day, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Goodbye.